Welcome to the complete story for Bioshock. In this series, we're going to be going over all the games and extra bits that make up for the Bioshock plot. Alright, disclaimer time guys. This series is supposed to be 5 parts long, and this episode's already a prologue. So, any parts that we've left out are most likely for a reason. But don't worry, we're going to give you enough information so you can at least follow a discussion about the game. We're going to go over the key characters and the key plot points so that it can flow properly. But if we miss something, let us know in the comments down below. Lastly, if you catch a mispronounced name or place, get over it. I'm French and I did my best. With that being said, time for story mode voice. Andrew Ryan... <clears throat> How does he do that? Andrew Ryan, that's him right here, was a Russian citizen who grew tired of how the government was running his country. Feeling that the weak, or parasites as he put them, were relying on the upper class to sustain them. So he fled from Russia and headed to America, where he believed a great man could really prosper. He devoted himself fully to his new country, grateful for the wealth and fame he was rewarded for his intellect and determination. However, when the social program spread across America, he felt the same feeling he felt in Russia. You know, the, the whole parasites being supported by the upper class. Yeah. Anyway, the, the destruction of Hiroshima with the atomic bomb was the final straw for Ryan. So he set out with the fortune he had built for himself and started to work on his new project, the underwater city of Rapture. The construction of Rapture began in 1946, with Ryan using his own private steamliner to transport building supplies to where the city would be built, which was located in this area. It's right there. See it? There was a building platform constructed, nicknamed the Sinker, which was used to lower supplies and crew to the site. Ryan hired the architectural firm Wales & Wales to design Rapture and turn it into a metropolis that was a perfect utopia where art, industry and science would expand undisturbed by outside forces and governments. Rapture was designed to be entirely self-supporting and it was powered entirely by undersea volcanic vents. Hundreds and thousands of people from around the world immigrated to Rapture if they were approved by Andrew Ryan, obviously, but these people weren't allowed to tell anyone where they were going, so these mass disappearances came to be known as the vanishing on the surface. Well, we all know that in reality they were all in rapture, and that they were there because Ryan believed they were the best examples of humankind. Unfortunately, the city was not designed to house all the workers needed to construct it. While all the elite population filled the metropolis, the workers were left in leaking, crowded, in what was meant to be temporary housing, in an area called Papa's Drop. The contrast between the poor and the upper-class citizens was ignored by Ryan and his ruling council. One thing Ryan did acknowledge, though, is that the citizens were becoming anxious due to the isolation of rapture and the lack of sun. He therefore invited a renowned psychiatrist, Sophia Lamp, to come down to Rapture and help people cope with life under the sea. Even though her philosophy was completely different from Ryan's. Obviously, it didn't take long to cause problems, as she was devoting much of her effort to the poor citizens, which made her become a significant political rival of Ryan. Around the same time, Dr. Bridget Tenenbaum was walking around in an area called Neptune's Bounty when she noticed a man playing catch. <laughs> Nothing special, you might think, except this man's hands were previously paralyzed due to a war injury. After questioning him, it was revealed he had been bitten by a sea slug. Well, the man apparently kept it, so Tenenbaum asked if she could study it. She realized that she was onto something amazing and began the search for someone who could fund her research. She was blown off by all these scientists in Rapture, but at some point she approached Frank Fontaine, a businessman with a well-known name in Neptune's Bounty. He agreed to fund her as long as he could make profit off her findings in the end. What Tenenbaum didn't realize though is that she was making business with a man who was making his fortune running a smuggling ring that brought contraband items from the surface into Rapture. She began her search and she discovered that the substance the species of sea slugs created worked like stem cells. Using it, she was able to manipulate DNA entirely. 
As a matter of fact, she was able to cure diseases, fix birth defects, and ultimately rewrite the human's genetic code, allowing them to do things never before possible. In a sense, she was able to give them superpowers or abilities. She believed this substance was a rebirth for humanity, and so it was dubbed Adam. Now, shortly after the discovery of Adam, another breakthrough was made. Scientists realized that if the slug was implanted in a host, it would generate as much as 20 to 30 times more Adam than in its natural state. Originally, they tried implanting slugs into a selection of different hosts, but only one type of subject worked well, and these were young girls. So after this discovery, they started implanting slugs into young girls. But they needed a ready supply of hosts to mass produce Adam, which is what Fountain wanted. Fountain decided to disguise his motives as charity work, and so he set up the Little Sisters Orphanage, uh, advertising it as a place where financially pressed families could send their girls for care and schooling. But these families didn't know the truth about what was happening to these girls, and once transformed, they eventually came to be known as Little Sisters. Alright guys, uh, this was the first part of the Rapture storyline, part 2 should be coming out very soon. In the meantime, uh, don't forget to check out the other complete stories if you haven't already. Um, subscribe, like, what else did I forget? I, I think that's pretty much it. Cheers for watching guys. <laughs>